All right, so we just finished up uh, kind of walking through the basic intuition between doing hypothesis testing with two population means. Um, and the basic gist was that we, you know, if we take a difference, if we take a sample difference, that sample difference is going to be normally distributed. X bar 1 minus X bar 2, that's the difference between our two samples. The mean of the sampling distribution is going to be mu 1 minus mu 2. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is going to be, that's kind of a big mess, but, you know, you can always Google it. It's not hard to come by. It's the square root of sigma 1 squared over N1 plus sigma 2 squared over N2. It's not that hard, really. You just plug the stuff in and chug through it once you have it. Okay. What that means is that if we actually draw a value, meaning select one, right, from a sample, say here, and we get an x bar 1 minus x bar 2, um, then we can just work out a little magic related to the standard normal distribution, like so, 0 and 1, and we get a z value, which we can use a score formula to get um, z equals x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 all over that square root of sigma 1 squared divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by n2. Okay, now we don't know mu1 minus mu2 because we're doing hypothesis testing, so we don't really know where this curve is, right? It could be here, it could be here, uh, it could be here, and I apologize for my curves, as always. Um, so our test statistic, then, is going to rely on a hypothesized value, right? It's our test statistic under the null. It's going to look like this. x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus d0, where d0 is our hypothesized difference. This is our question, right? So we know that that distribution under the null is going to be centered somewhere, and so that d0 is where that distribution is centered. Sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. And that's our n newest test statistic, right? It's distributed standard normal. And essentially, if we draw two samples, right, we get these, and we know these, and for now, we're assuming that we know sig our, our standard deviations. Just That was the, the simplifying assumption for the, for the example, for this test statistic. Um, and we're assuming this, right? We're assuming d0. So we have all this stuff. We just plug it in, pops out a value of z. We do inference exactly the way we've done it before. We have to worry about whether we have a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test. The easiest way to do that stuff, I've said it before, I'll say it again, is to really understand the intuition, to just practice until it's not a question of like looking at it and figuring out like some sort of mnemonic device. If it's a less than sign in the alternative, then it's a, you know, that that's not as helpful. What's better to do is just to really understand it because it makes it easier. Okay, so let's do an example. Let me pull up some uh, practice problems quick, and then uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what they look like. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an example where we have two populations. We know the mean, or we know the standard deviations of the populations. We don't know the means, and we're doing a, 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 some hypothesis testing there. So uh, bear with me while I bust this open. I thought I had it. Two means of proportions. There we go. Oh, that's the answers. This is what I want. Okay. So here's an example. Pop this out. It's going to be question 7 from chapter 10 of Anderson. Um, I'll put this on the next page. During the 2003 season, Major League Baseball took steps to speed up the play of baseball games in order to maintain fan interest. The average duration of a game from a sample of 60 games played during the summer of 2002 was 2 hours and 52 minutes. The average duration of a game from a sample of 50 games played during the summer of 2003 was 2 hours and 46 minutes. A. A research hypothesis was that the steps taken during the 2003 season would reduce the population mean duration of baseball games. Formulate the null and alternative hypotheses. Oops. So, what do those look like? Well, get my pen back up here. In this case, we have to be careful about which population is which, right? So we're going to say, let's scroll up here. We're going to let population 1 uh, be, well, yeah. We're going to let population 1 be 2002. So population 1 
is games in 2002. Population 2 is games in 2003. And if you remember, all our hypotheses always look something like this. We have a null. It's going to be about mu1 minus mu2. And an alternative that's also going to be about that difference. So what is mu1 minus mu2? Well, it's the difference between the mean length of a game in 2002 and the mean length of a game in 2003. Now, if the, the question is asking, uh, there's a research hypothesis that these steps should reduce the population mean duration. What that's saying is that mu2, the mean in 2003, is going to be less than mu1. That means that mu1 minus mu2 should be positive, right? So the, the, that's the, if that's the uh, research hypothesis, then what we want to say is mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. We want to try to prove that that's true. The games were longer in 2002 than they were in 2003, and that's what this is saying. The null, then, is going to be that actually the steps made it longer, right? Mu2 is greater, you know, the games were actually longer in 2003, or at least, or the same. And that's, that's, those are the null and alternative hypotheses. It's a little tricky. Um, but the trick is just to be careful about how you define this stuff, and that you're translating a, a word, you know, some language, English language, into uh, mathematics. And it's not always straightforward, but practice makes perfect, so I highly recommend practice. Okay. So, question two, part B, what is the point estimate of the reduction in the mean duration of games during the 2003 season? So the point estimate, if you recall from the last video, our, is our best guess of mu1 minus mu2. Our best guess of that is going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Now, x bar 1 they gave us, right? x bar 1 was the sample from uh, 2002. It was 2 hours and 52 minutes. Uh, let me write that here. Where am I at? There I am. 2 hours and 52 minutes, which is also 120 plus 52, it's 172 minutes. And uh, 2 hours and 46 minutes up here is the, is the sample from 2003. So 246, that's going to be 166. Uh, so these are six, that's six minutes shorter, right? That's our best guess, is that it shortened it by six minutes. Okay, so that's part B. We successfully calculated x bar 1 minus x bar 2. <clears throat> part C says historical data indicate a population standard deviation of 12 minutes as a reasonable assumption of both years. So it's saying that sigma 1 equals 12 and sigma 2 equals 12, and we should be fine. Conduct the hypothesis test and report the p-value at a 0 0.05 level of, uh, level of significance. What is your conclusion? Okay, now I'm going to slip back into my five-step approach because for me questions vary greatly, but I know I'll get the right answers if I take my five-step approach, because that's how you do this stuff. So step one was to formulate my hypotheses. Step two is to state my uh, level of significance, and they're asking me to use alpha equals 0 0.05. So I will. Okay. Step three is to choose a test statistic. Um, and because we have two populations, and we're looking at means, we know that the test statistic is going to look like this. Z equals, put a big fraction here, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus d0 over the square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. And that's going to be your test statistic. I know what all this stuff is because I've been practicing and I, I understand. These are my two sample means, right? Um, my two sample means are right here. D0 comes from this. That's where D0 comes from. That's the difference under the null. Um, the question gives me the standard population standard deviations, which I'm going to plug in here, but you got to be careful because you're going to have to square these, right? Um, and then these are my two sample sizes, N1 and N2. Okay, so step four is going to be to compute these. So let's write down all the stuff I need. Well, I need to know x bar 1, x bar 2, d0, sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, n1, and n2. And I can pull all this stuff out of the question from different places. But once I have all this stuff here, I can just plug it in. So x bar 1 is 172, x bar 2 is 166, d0 is 0. That's, we get that from up here. 
Sigma 1 squared, well, that's going to be 144. Sigma 2 squared is going to be 144. Uh, N1 and N2, i got to scroll back up. That's 144, not 149. It's a little confusing. Okay, because my pen is not great. So we had a sample of 60 games the first time and 50 games the second time. So 60 and 50 are N1 and N2. They're not going to be exactly the same, which means we're going to have to be careful about that. That's okay, though. 60 and 50. So my value of Z is going to be 172 minus 166 minus 0 over the square root of 144 over 60 plus 144 over 50. Okay, easy enough to calculate. The top is going to be 6. I know that. The bottom is a little bit harder, but I can bust out Excel. Uh, here we go. Here's Excel. What's it asking? Let's, uh, there we go. Here you can see this. It's going to be equal to square root of um, 144 divided by 60 plus 144 divided by 50. Excel will do that for me. It's 2.29. Now I can figure out what it is. It's 6 divided by 2. Point, or that's like 2.3 actually. So equal 6 divided by this. 2.61 is my z value. 2.30. 2.3. 6, 1. That's my value of z. I can I know that that's going to lead to rejection of the null because that's really big. Um, but for step five, we can do it by the numbers. Let me make sure I'm doing okay on time. I don't want to cut you guys off. Okay, I got uh, three minutes or so. Okay, so step five. I'm gonna is just once we have a test statistic. It's just like the stuff we've been doing before. Um, we have our z distribution centered at zero, standard deviation of one. We have a 2.61 is our value here. Um, and remember, our alternative is that it's greater than zero. So big numbers, positive numbers, um, positive z's will uh, will lead to rejection. So what we want to know, oops, is what is this right here? So let me uh, bust out my z table. Where is it? Come on, z distribution table. Looking up 2.61. Uh, make this so you guys can see it. And you can see that 2.61 is 0.4955. Wait, 0.4955 is that area. And it should be coming should be becoming second nature by now to look this stuff up. If it's not, I would recommend that you go back and work on more of the normal distribution problems because really just being having this stuff down makes a lot of this a lot easier. So 0 0.4955 is what we have here. We want to find this area though. So we subtract that from 0 0.5. 4955 gives us 10994. It's going to be 0.0045. And that's our p-value. Now, we go back to what we had for alpha, 0 .05, 0 0.05. And you see that 0 0.0045 is less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha. And that means we reject the null. If you remember, the null was that the rules had no effect on the length of the games. Um, but we conclude that it did have an effect. All right, I have like a minute. Let's see. What was the percentage reduction in the mean time of baseball games? Well, it used to be, what, 172 minutes, and now they're 166. So let's do this. I'll just wing this. So they decreased in length by uh, 3%, 4%. Should they be pleased with the results? Yeah, I mean, there's a significant effect. Um, yeah, that's still pretty long. I don't know. Six minutes a game, does that add up? I suppose. Uh, they might have wanted a bigger effect. If they wanted a bigger effect, they should do more about it. But, you know. But there was a significant reduction. It was statistically significant, not huge. So, that's my conclusion. Anyway, that's how you do these problems when we know the standard deviation of the population. We'll look at some more of them. Uh, but you can start to see the power that hypothesis testing has from a problem like this. If you have any questions, post a comment or send me an email at jjdelaney at ualr.edu, and I'll be glad to answer it. Thanks, guys. Bye.